Hello again to all my friends. Together we can play some rock and roll. Approximating Expectimax with AI, part 2. Um, I can even add text here like uh, drink Python and light GPM. Cool, okay. So what are we gonna do? So uh, this is a follow-up for the part one of this video series that I that I uh, started earlier today, which is uh, which was uh, starting to generate data for XPTMAX uh, fixed vector data set for sorry for uh, uh, for uh, generating. We generated data with a fixed vector data set in order to train an AI. So this is part two where we will talk about said AI. Yeah. Sorry about my <laughs> time to uh, reality. Um, so um, this is the same intro as, as uh, earlier. We have expect mass which, which is slow. Uh, we want to uh, represent the problem as a fixed size vector which we can feed to a machine learning algorithm which here will be uh, like GBM so as before some AI we've gathered the data I showed you before I'll show you again in more details uh, this time and why like GBM what is the problem to solve uh, why like GBM is because first uh, I enjoy it. I use it extensively at work, so I know about it. Uh, Python 2, I do use it, uh, not to the number, but to I use Python also, uh, which means I know the tools, I know what to do, I know how to set it up uh, to work, so that helps. <laughs> uh, I know it's hard to integrate with Java, so mm, might try something else in the future, but for now, I uh, will use Python just for uh, demonstration. So, LightGBM, why LightGBM? Because uh, first, it has the things we need, and second, it's uh, quite fast even on a CPU, which is not the case for, let's say, TensorFlow or PyTorch, other uh, machine learning libraries, uh, which usually only run well on uh, GPU which I do have though I could have uh, used that but I think it's, it's it's nice that we have something that can run on CPU in a relatively uh, relatively uh, short amount of time so what's the problem to solve here the problem to solve is to uh, guess a number uh, which is the utility value for a board state and a um, pound to play and a uh, row. I have a drawing here. Yeah. For a player, yeah. So you have a player that has possible uh, pounds to play, M multiple pounds usually. I don't do the I don't do any uh, data for rows that only lead to one pound to play because it's the, we don't need an AI for this. We can just play that 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 pound. So using the data, uh, what does the data look like? So I'll start with the original data, which I've got here, and I've uh, partitioned it to be uh, easier to read than the first video, which I found in between the the two videos, which is nice. I use something called Rainbow CSV, I think, and in there I can shrink or align uh, the columns. So that's great. I like this. I use VS Codium, which is the open source and free version of uh, VS Code, which is not uh, full of uh, telemetry by Microsoft. So here's the raw data. So this is what comes out of Java. Uh, looks great. Oh, okay. So. So something else that's that's nice about LightGBN, me uh, for this problem here, it's not 
used, but uh, just so you know, it handles by default uh, missing values, which is a problem in machine learning. Usually, you want to uh, fill the holes in your data with something else. And usually, you want also to inform your model, your machine learning model, when you did so. So, if you have uh, a case of uh, missing value, let's say here we have none or just nothing. <laughs> Um, we could in we could try and guess what's in there using I don't know an average, and then uh, you could inform your model that you did this that you filled it. So set another that value to one to set to say that you filled it, and other columns where the value already exists you will set zero. This is not a problem for us now, but I use the LightBM, so if eventually I have uh, problems with missing data, uh, it can handle it quite well. Also, it can uh, it can take values that are not normalized, which means that I can leave the values as they are originally, without trying to uh, sorry, without trying to. Uh, scale them. What's scaling? Scaling is to, uh, let's say we have light left that goes from 6 to, I think, uh, 0. So if I wanted to scale it or normalize it with a number that goes from, let's say, 0 to 1, then I will divide by, by 6 all the values in this column. Same thing for dark left that goes from 7 to 0, so I will divide by the max value, so 7 to have one seventh uh, going from zero to one. That would be great, but we would have to maintain this uh, normalization, which I don't I absolutely don't need with the LightBM because LightBM is a decision tree underneath, under the hood. Uh, the only thing in this that it does not understand is the first column, which is game, because uh, the, it doesn't understand strings. It understands categorical values, so. Uh, here, light turn is a uh, true false. I don't need to convert this into a number at all. It can un understand uh, Boolean values. Uh, same with the rows, the zeros, and the x x y uh, coordinates. I it also understands all those those numbers, the rankings too. Even though we don't really use this, uh, but not the game. So what do we do about that? I showed it in the first video uh, quickly, but I'll do it in more detail now. I have a prepared data set that just reads and concatenates. Uh, I have many CSVs that look like this. But there are many, 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 many games, different games, running over many hours. Uh, and then I load those, and I convert those to uh, different uh, minus one to one values where zero is an empty uh, square uh, they, they all uh, tell us what the values the, the the pounds what the pounds are on the board so they describe the whole board this is the value that comes out of the java implementation which is a, the, a way to describe the board state at a moment t in the game d being dark and l being light to the two players of the game and uh, the dots here are are for the empty uh, the empty squares of the of the board if we omit the spaces and the dots we have <clears throat> exactly 20 values so 3 6 9 12 13, 14, 15, 17. Wait, I think I messed up. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. Okay, so we have 20 values. So we can range from 0 to 90, which is exactly what I did. If I go to uh, this spreadsheet with, uh, that I prepared, 
I've uh, arranged the columns so that the game utility and rank, which are three columns that are special in this data set, uh, game is not usually used because, like I said, LightVN doesn't understand text. I needed to uh, convert it to a set of columns, which is game 0 to 19. That all uh, describe the possible uh, sets in the game. So this is what my AI can understand that comes from game. So I, then I can get rid of the column game when I train my data set, uh, my, my model, sorry. The utility is the answer. So this is a special value called uh, a label in the field. This is what we want to uh, optimize for. And this is what my AI doesn't know about until they uh, emit a prediction, then I calculate a loss. I, I, I don't really do that, my computer does that for me. <laughs> it's all uh, it's on the uh, train function for LightGBM here. And the ranking is another way to uh, visualize the utility function. A rank of one means that the this specific pound was the first move or the most, uh, the highest scoring move if we compared it to other um, the other possible moves for this game setup with the same role, because when when you you, you throw a dice in the in the game you have let's say four or in this case three you have many or multiple uh, options that you can play usually and uh, we, the the ultimate the ultimate task with the utility function is to uh, rank order the those 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 uh, those pounds that we want to print. So here, this is the most uh, wanted pound the, to play, like the first ranked, the most uh, the highest ranked pound to, that could have played. Here, the four means that it's the fourth place in the list of origin the original list of four. Uh, maybe four or less uh, uh, possible move for this row. So, okay. It's another way to uh, to do uh, machine learning ranking. Uh, I know LightGBM does some ranking with the LightGBM ranker. I tried it and I couldn't make, uh, make it work properly. And uh, I don't think it's exactly what I need because uh, usually the uh, Forget about it. <laughs> it's not. It's not important. So I can even just like uh, delete this column. So utility is the answer. We don't want this in our data set. The game is the original game. We don't use it because we've translated it into uh, minus one, zero, or one here uh, to show the board state to our uh, machine in a format that it can it can understand. Dark left means uh, how many pounds are left to play. Light left. Uh, okay, sorry. Um, dark score um, means the number of pounds that are uh, out of the game for the dark, so the, the score. <laughs> light score is the same for the light player. Light turn means is it uh, light is it is it the turn for the light player to play or the the dark player? X Y means the position of the uh, pound that is to be played. It's the original position of the destination. So, all right. This should uh, set. This should set it up. If you give this to uh, a human and they draw it on a paper, they could recreate the game, like exactly as it is, and then think about it if they want. So. This is all that's necessary. We don't need game, we don't need utility uh, either. So, okay. Um, what's the next step? So we do need to transform it, as I said, because the game uh, is in a format that we cannot understand. Uh, what will we use it for? Okay, so LightGBM. Uh, we will use what's called a LightGBM regressor. What's a regressor? Uh, there are three types. Well, sorry. 
usually two types of uh, different models in, uh, in machine learning. First is a classifier. Classifier is, is used usually to give us one, well, two or more classes. So if we were to give it a picture of my webcam now and say, what's that? Then they would classify this as, let's say, a uh, Senta uh, puppet thing. Hello. So, uh, okay, so that's a classifier. We don't really want that because we want to uh, approximate this value, which is not a class. It's uh, I cannot classify like classify things with this. I need to uh, approximate the the actual number using like uh, an actual number, a floating point uh, number. So this is what a regressor is. A regressor is something that approximates a function, a mathemat mathematical function, in this case, the utility function. So we need the LogiBand regressor, and I set it up here, I can show you a little bit. The train uh, code. First we load the data set, get rid of game and rank, as I did in my explanation earlier. I I use the label utility uh, to tell it what to try and guess and to become better at. Here it becomes a little bit uh, data, data scientific because we want to uh, train our model on train data. So a uh, big subset of our data in, K, uh, in order to evaluate our uh, model on data that's the AI has never seen before. So we have 80% of our data that's in train data, then 20% uh, the, the rest in test data. We made two data sets for uh, LightGBM. And then uh, we pass out parameters for LightGBM, which is the number of iterations to, to train, number of leaves. This is like a, it's very specific. You can Google it if you want. Uh, learning rate is the speed at which uh, the AI will try to learn. So when it makes an error, how much will it uh, affect the, the, the model when training? Uh, the metric to uh, follow our test data on. So this is uh, when we train, we'll see the RMSC, which is the root um, mean squared error. So we want to square the errors of all our data points then do a mean of this and then do the root uh, square root of it so w which will give us like how much in average our uh, answer is uh, not good objective regression so uh, i want to make a regressor here which I explained before. Early stepping around is just to uh, stop before getting to too much, too many iterations if we are stalling in our, uh, well, if we're trying to overtrain our model, it will detect it after 15 rounds if, if it hasn't been uh, better. If, if we didn't get a better score in 15 rounds on the Test data, it will stop the training. So this, this keeps us from uh, doing too much. Training. So then we get the model, it trains for a while, and then we can uh, dump it on the disk. And after that, we can use the uh, model of predict to uh, use some data that does not have the actual uh, label in it and then try to print the label and then I do just print it just to see uh, what it looks like. So that's pretty much it with the data we have. Sorry about that. Okay. So that's how we are uh, using the model, training model I just told you. Now I want to play. So we have a model now. What do we do? Well, we want to play the game. Sorry. 
I think I ate too much. So we want to try and play with the thing we just trained. We have a, an inf we call this inferring or inference. Uh, I've done some very basic code just to uh, load a pool of models. I, I load the model many times if I want to have many requests at once. I do it in an API style, so I have a web server that's running when running infer. I'll run it now. I... Okay, something's wrong. Okay, it's already running, sorry. <laughs> I tried to open the port twice, the same port twice. So, to uh, to end this, we like load the model and then use what's coming in as uh, a data frame. So it looks like normal JSON that has the exact same format as we had before. I've uh, written this down myself just to show you. It's uh, an actual legit game with a row of one and two analyze the different pieces. Whose turn is it? What's the score? How many are left? And then if I do send, I get this uh, answer as a prediction. So I could conclude that the first move is the highest ranked uh, move and then I will play this one move which is the pound x y of zero zero so this oh sorry so this is pretty much it um if we were to well i did this but uh, if we were to plug it in somewhere i did it in the uh, royal Ur analysis code base i plugged in the, the api as it is right here and then i called the uh, the, the API via a web uh, web web call so a web response and then I use the answer to pick the highest uh, legal move well I, I output the scores but what uses this will uh, use the, the scores in order to determine which is the highest utility and then pick that this move This is, yeah, this is pretty much it. I have very great results with this. Uh, about 93%, uh, no, sorry, 47% uh, win rate against the original. So it's a 3% uh, loss or actual loss uh, rate for our machine learning AI. So the next step is to generate data with the depth of 8 and then train an AI with this and then be the depth 7 AI that we know of. Bye bye.